As a neurologist interested in migraine, or migraine if you want to say it on the other side of the water, one gets sent patients with visual disturbance and they come with the label migraine aura. And over a period of time, I saw a number of patients who had a visual disturbance, but it clearly wasn't like migraine aura. And I thought about them and discussed things with them. What really stopped me in my tracks was when I saw a young chap, a seven-year-old, who had the, reported the identical change to what adults were reporting. Children are so honest and so frank. And when I saw this child, I knew there was something to it. And that's really got, what got me hooked into it. I mean, I really believe in medicine that we learn a lot from our patients. Um, and I have definitely, in my, in my whole career, learned a lot from my patients, whether it be indirectly or directly by them teaching me something. So my journey into visual snow really was patient uh, instigated. I basically saw uh, a, uh, a patient one day who was referred to me with symptoms of visual snow, what I now know to be visual snow. And I basically said, you know what, there's nothing, the rest of your eye exam is completely normal. Everything is fine. All the tests that we've done, the diagnostic tests, the MRI scans, the eye tests, they're all normal. I think it's just some floaters. I have floaters myself, I live with them. So you know what, just relax, not a big deal, just you have to get used to it, basically. And as, a, as, a, as a, I was about to step out, he said, listen doctor, I've seen about four or five different doctors and I'm not crazy. These are really real things going on. And my GP said that, you know, if, if you can't figure this out, no one can. And so that sort of hit me. Um, like a big bag, a bag of rocks and I said, you know, wait a minute, so I paused. I said, you know what, let me just, even though it was a very busy clinic, very busy day, I said, let me just go back in and, and listen to him some more. And that's how I came into it. Well, visual snow has become an interest uh, of ours as an extension of all of the work that we have been doing. Uh, essentially, I started off looking at movement disorders and moved from there to looking at uh, the cognitive control of eye movements which actually involves measuring or controlling visual input and then measuring the responses that people make to stereotyped tasks. So we did a lot of that work in multiple sclerosis but remained interest in the, interested in the control mechanisms. Uh, now from a clinical perspective, that being quite different from what we were doing in research terms, I've seen many patients with visual snow over the course of my uh, clinical career uh, and it was just a little difficult to believe that this wasn't an organic uh, phenomenon rather than a psychological phenomenon as it was always called. It was often very distressing to the patients and somewhat distressing not to be able to give them some answers. And the more I looked at it, the more it seemed to have a stereotyped nature which uh, indicated that there should be uh, a structural or functional abnormality in the brain. Um, all of the uh, MRIs and uh, most of the studies that had been done failed to show any structural abnormality. So uh, we considered it was functional um, and, and not in the psychological sense uh, which, uh, which functional often uh, denotes. Um, what we do is look at function uh, and disease is all about function, it's not about structure. So uh, we started looking at them, looking for a unifying abnormality, having had a unifying theory of what visual snow might be. Um, and felt that it was a really interesting way to look at how the brain works, at least in, in, in one system. Um, that's how we got into it and it uh, became um, more interesting as time went on. Well, visual snow really came to me. I work alongside Owen with a range of neurologists and quite often Owen White would see um, individuals who reported visual snow in his clinical practice. I don't run a clinical practice so I don't see them on these individuals to treat them, um, but his interest was piqued and we started discussing ways of how we can measure visual snow. It is a, it is a perceptual phenomenon that is not measurable by any other sort of scale, but we decided that there are a few methods that we could use to see if we can measure the functional changes that were happening in these individuals and so that's where I step in. So designing experimental protocols, for example, to determine what those changes are, and that's what we're doing continuously now.